Hey, just really quick, want to tell you all how I'm creating this podcast. Um, it's fairly new, but it's been really exciting to use Anchor. Um, it's been a really good experience so far. If you guys just want to um, experiment, head to Anchor app or anchor.fm to get started. It's free. Um, it has tons of tools that you can use right on the website or app. Um, it'll distribute your podcast for you and you can make podcast, um, monetize your podcast and everything you need to know about podcasting is in one spot. Um, it's been the easiest. If you have any questions, let me know. Birth wasn't given to us as women to be a curse. Like the process of giving birth is a gift from the father and an invitation into being transformed and walking in a greater degree of faith like and I and I hate that in the church we've turned it into a medical event that you have to be rescued from instead of letting it be an agent of grace and transformation for women of faith because that's what it is and so having babies is God's gift to us like it's not something to be afraid of it's not something to have done to us it's not something to seek escape from it's um each one will bring out more things that we need to deal with will give us more things that we need to be the mother to the specific children he's given us and will give us more opportunities to walk in the faith welcome to the salt podcast where we talk about all things simple yep simple anointed living tips i'm your host jenny Benya. Welcome back, everybody, to the Salt Podcast. I have a awesome guest today that I have never met in person, but that is the beauty of social media. We live seas apart, and we're connected recently. Praise the Most High! Thank you so much, Brooke, for taking time to be on the show today. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, actually, you are very special because you are my first guest who actually reached out to me to be a part of the show. Um, oh, I because... didn't know that. That's awesome. <laughs> so mm-hmm. far, everyone has been either somebody I know or that I have followed. But um, actually, episode, I think it was 11 with Nicole Neesby, she yeah. recommended people to join your group so I joined yep. your Facebook group yeah. and then I guess you must have seen my request and checked me out or something and then bam that is connected. exactly what happened yep and I'm like <laughs> yes thank you for doing that because I love your group and I love yeah. what you're doing but let me not speak for you can you just tell us who you are and what you're about and let people know what this Facebook group is that we're talking about (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's it's like this big mystery group um yeah so I'm Brooke Collier and I live in West Michigan um in an old farmhouse on an acre and a half of land with my five kids my husband 14 chickens and three cats um (laughs) we don't garden although I always feel like we should because we have beautiful space for it um but we love exploring nature we unschool our kids and so it's completely self-directed my husband and I are both essentially un- or self-employed. Um, he's in ministry with a national prayer organization. And then I am both a family photojournalist and a birth worker of about 10 years. Nice. Um, so the Facebook group that we were referring to, it's called <laughs> Natural Christian Home Births. Um, and I just started it about a year and a half ago to make a safe space for women who are both followers of Jesus and what some might call crunchy, just kind of naturally oh, yeah. minded. Um, Cause mm-hmm. I, I found myself that I felt sometimes like a weirdo for being both those things. I um, know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you on that. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, we could probably go off on a whole riff on that alone, but It's just like at church, you're like the weirdo for not just popping a Tylenol when you have a headache and choosing to use herbs instead. And then you dive into like natural health land and there's like a lot of kind of new age and pagan stuff that doesn't resonate with your spirit as a Christian and just can feel like a strange coexisting of Hmm. like two, two groups that neither one you totally fit in. And 
Um, exactly. And then you start talking about having your baby at home and then new age pagan stuff in the like natural and unassisted birth world becomes even stronger and the church becomes even more like what we are doing what <laughs> yeah exactly so, oh, but gosh. to me it's so it's married so beautifully like to me um pursuing natural health and home birth like increases my awe and worship for Jesus and for God as creator and honors him so Ooh, yeah. it's strange to me that in the world it's so disconnected because in my heart it's the only thing that makes sense (laughs) yeah it's so pure in its form it's so going back to you know just nate like our own nature of how we were created right like how you said like god the creator like how did they do it then (laughs) of course it was like this you know and well we don't live in those ages okay but Hmm. uh the faith is that we can do it safely and you know there's so much beauty that comes from that experience that that can be taken away just because you need to be in a sanitized space they say Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I I feel you because um I I I forget who who I'm quoting I'll have to look at later and put it in the show notes but someone said they're too they're too Christian for the hippies and too hippie for the Christians. Um, And I I always, (laughs) I always resonate with that because yeah, I I have tons of hippie friends and like how you said, new age and, and all that. And we connect so much on like, yeah, home birth and unschooling. And I'm sure you get that a lot, but then the Christian side, it's like, they look at you like, Oh, but how could you? And yes. then the same thing happens in the church, right? Where they're like, <laughs> oh, look at you. But it's so yeah. questioned. It's so, yeah. It, it creates so many triggers on either side. So I'm happy I found you. And I'm so grateful mm-hmm. for your group because I see so many other women uh, feeling the same way. So, yeah. So, okay. You said, let's backtrack though. Like you said you only started this group a year and a half ago, but you have five children. So this has been mm-hmm. like, how did this happen? Like, how did you learn about home birth? And <laughs> tell us your origin story. My origin story. <laughs> I love it. Um, sure. Well, so I didn't grow up in a particularly like naturally minded health family, but I had an uncle who was a chiropractor and he adjusted me from two weeks of age onward. Ooh. So I feel like that was like an interesting thread or like that the Lord introduced Mm -hmm. into my life story early on, because as you probably know, chiropractic care comes with just this enormous trust in the Mm -hmm. design of creation and our bodies and their ability to heal themselves. And um, so that was always there. And then I um, have, well, okay, where to start? (laughs) (laughs) I went to, I went to college to get a degree in counseling and then I got a master's degree in counseling and added on a certificate in holistic health started working for a naturopathic chiropractor around that same time who was just brilliant and amazing and also a believer. Mm. Um, So that was where I think I got like really more deeply into understanding um, alternative ways of health and also was introduced to the idea of home birth. So I hadn't grown up knowing that that was a thing one could do. Um, I was not even married at this point. Did you grow up Christian as well? I grew up Christian. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, like, in, yeah, but not with the natural health bit. Um, mm-hmm. So the first time I heard about home birth, I was like, oh, you can do that? Well, then obviously that's what I'm going to do because <sighs> my whole life I've been very wary of and uncomfortable around medical things. It just is not, I know for some people that feels safe and comforting to me. It never has. Um, so by the time I met my husband, which was kind of later in life, Um, I was interning at a inner city prayer ministry that was helping homeless people rehabilitate from addictions while also holding down new monastic rhythms of prayer in a really rough neighborhood. And I met my husband while I was an intern there. He was part of a similar community in a different state and their community came to visit our community. And nine (laughs) months later, we were married. Um, oh. <laughs> it was very much a whirlwind. Awesome. 
Um, and I told him while we were dating that I wanted to have my babies at home. And he, on the surface, reacted with like, oh, like people do that? <laughs> like, just he's like, I never heard of that. But he told me much later that internally he was like, you're crazy. That's reckless. Are you trying to win hippie awards? Like, oh, like, no. <laughs> like, how far do you have to take this natural health thing? Um, he didn't let on to me just how extreme his internal reaction was. Yeah. Um, I've heard you say in your, with your husband, he was kind of more ahead of you on these things, but yeah, it was not that way was. in my marriage. Yeah. Aww. So yeah, my, husband was the one that, easily. my husband was the one that, um, for those of you who have not heard my story, <laughs> what she's mentioning is that probably in yeah, in episodes 11 and 12, were, those were the two birth talks that we did so far. And even on the blog, I've written it and said, said it tons of times before because my <laughs> husband's the one that got me into all this, I guess, um, you, you know, vegetarian, holistic, uh, vegan, home birth, unschooling world. So he's the one that, yes. that, that encouraged me and actually educated me or re-educated me about birth. And he was yeah. really strong about we have we have to. Sorry, but we mm. have to. <laughs> like home birth. <laughs> so that was yeah, that's different. Like, yeah. It's that is unusual. Different. I feel like that's really unusual, actually, for it to go in that direction. Exactly. It's very yeah. cool. So it, yeah. Which, you know, your husband's reaction or I guess was he your husband at the time when you <laughs> told him that your boyfriend, he was like uh no (laughs) you crazy that's like the common reaction yes absolutely I hear that all the time from Mm -hmm. women who want a home birth and their husbands are like not sure about it and they there's like torn like I want to honor my husband because he's also the father of my baby and he's my husband but I also really really want this and how do I work that out and so many people wrestle through that yeah. So that was our mm-hmm. story, but luckily our wrestling match wasn't super long and he pretty quickly <laughs> came around to the idea. So we got pregnant um, less than a year into our marriage um, and Aww. found a midwife, And but we had a loss at 10 weeks or 11 weeks. Oh, I'm sorry. And, oh, um, that's hard. Yeah, it was really hard. Because you, you know, you think you're almost out of the woods, right? Like you're almost into yeah. that second trimester and then, oh, just kidding. Um, no. And the midwife we had hired at the time was just kind of, she wasn't super sensitive about it. She was just like, oh yeah, it sounds like you're having a miscarriage. Call me if you need anything. Just didn't really oh. like walk <laughs> through that experience with me with much compassion or attentiveness at all. So I, I mean, we went to like a ready care and like confirmed by ultrasound that there wasn't a heartbeat. And then. They offered me a drug to get bleeding going, which I declined. And then I Mm -hmm. went home and just had a natural unassisted miscarriage. Uh, I, it didn't even cross my mind to do it. Otherwise I like having a DNC, which I know is commonly recommended. I, it wasn't even on my radar. So I just labored. It was like a mini labor in my bathtub um, and on the toilet. And I remember passing, the tissue and so that was like I guess that was my first unassisted birth <laughs> oh, in a wow. weird way That's, yeah not as you planned but no I'm, I'm sure there was things that you learned from that experience and what a great way to do it like I would so much rather go through that experience in the comfort of my home yeah. feeling safe and um than to be put in a gown and have instruments inserted into me to remove you know what I mean like I I, which just doesn't feel honoring at all to the reality of a life that you were cherishing and then have to say goodbye to so I'm very grateful that that was my initiation into birth even though it was not a live birth Mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that I know that's yeah and it's not always easy for us to talk about. Um, mm-hmm. I, that happened to my sister a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that episode isn't out yet, but soon. Mm-hmm. I guess it'll be out before this one. So my sister opens Good. up a little bit about her her miscarriages as well. So mm-hmm. oh, great. I, I walked with her through that. It's and important. It's not, yeah, it's, 
it's always a, I feel like a difficult conversation because some people just want to say, you know, oh, but it wasn't a fully developed baby or, mm -hmm. you know, these mm -hmm. things happen, you know, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. still, it doesn't make things any easier. No, and it's still a, it's still a pregnancy and birth that you experience. So thank you for, mm -hmm. for sharing that as your first, yeah. your first um, birth experience. Yeah. Thanks for hearing it. I didn't ex plan to s share that part, but it just came out. So we'll trust that it's there for a reason. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So then we moved back to, we had been living in his state. We moved back to my state and we're fixing up a crappy old house we bought during the housing market crash. And I remember <laughs> suddenly falling on the floor and weeping hysterically and saying how tired I was. And I was like, as I was weeping, I remember thinking, like, I know we're working hard on a house and that's tiring, but this is a little unnorm like unusual. Could I be pregnant? So long story short, we found out we were pregnant again on the due date of that first baby. And we were not planning to be, and it was kind of hard to receive because I felt like I hadn't finished grieving the loss. Yeah. Um, but pretty it's a quickly blessing at the to... same time oh my yeah goodness. so much like the due yeah. date that's like yeah. no coincidence like right I feel like there's so yeah. many times the most high does stuff like that just to just to be like it's not a coincidence mm -hmm. this is me mm -hmm. doing this for you like yes this like is your I blessing. see you yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah so we were a joke is broke as a joke so we mm -hmm. and we were on medicare and so we thought we couldn't hire a home birth midwife um, so we went with the hospital midwives, like a group of three of them and started care with them. And it was okay. Like it was okay. But then at about 28 weeks, we went to a screening of the movie, um, the business of being born Two, I think it was, or it was like oh. some birth related movie. Yeah. And afterwards there was a panel of local birth workers, um, like midwives and doulas and such. And I was sitting there listening to them so talk about home birth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started crying in the audience, like, because I was like, I really want a home birth. Like, I never stopped wanting to have my baby at home. I just feel stuck. Um, so on the way home, we decided to call one of the doulas from the panel and at least see if maybe she would be our doula. She was yeah. also a birth photographer, which I'd never heard of before, because this was 2011. It was like before birth photography was cool. And then <laughs> I was already a photographer. So that resonated with me. I was like, oh, that's so interesting. So we yeah. called her and asked if she would be our doula at the hospital. And she was like, I think you want to have a home birth. And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> and she said, the midwife I'm apprenticing with right now would probably barter with you. Do you want to? I already told her that she might be hearing from you. Why don't you give her a call? Oh, wow. So long story short she did indeed barter with us and I paid we switched services at 30 weeks I paid for her services with photography and freezer meals for her family for when she was on call <gasps> that's amazing yeah, yeah. so amazing that's oh so that's we, such a blessing wow no like it wouldn't have happened otherwise it just simply would not have so I'm forever grateful and so we had our first at home with her um, and the doula who did photograph the birth. And it was a very long 48 hour labor. Five of them spent pushing. Um, wow. A very, in, I now realize in hindsight that I had a lot of idealism about what the home birth would be like. Um, I pictured mm -hmm. myself in a like lovely nighty singing through my contractions and effortlessly birthing my baby <laughs> within half a day. You know, like I hadn't taken a birth class. I had just read oh. birth stories and like watched a few YouTube videos and like, it was very rooted in idealism, which I tend to be idealistic in general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was it's, very it's, much it's like hard a reality. not to romanticize. <laughs> You, yes. you think, oh, home birth, and you think like, yeah, like the candles and the lighting and mm -hmm. the breathing and moaning is going to be, <laughs> wow, yeah, it's yeah, some, but it was most of the time far from that, yeah, it is messy. yeah. So like, I didn't understand how much mess there would be, like both literally like leaking amniotic fluid and poop because I had taken castor oil, 
to <laughs> oh, yeah. like, um, That'll do it. like the emotional <laughs> messiness and yeah. it's just messy on every level. And especially that first time when you're going through the fire for the first time and, oh, yeah. um, man, like so important, like so many little deaths to my old self so that my new self could be reborn in my daughter. Right. Like I think that's oh, one of the yeah. gifts of birth. Mm -hmm. but it was not not easy and then on her way out um I like damaged my sciatic nerve somehow so like for two weeks afterwards like I had sharp shooting pain down my right leg <laughs> sciatic pain Ouch. um was stuck in bed and anyway it was intense but it I am so glad I remember there being a point where I was begging them to take me to the hospital and cut me open I was like, just cut me open. She's like, you, you want to go straight to the C-section, huh? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then they, the midwife and her assistants kind of like conversed in the kitchen and they came back and they said, here's the thing. This is your birth and you can do what you want to do. And if you want to go to the hospital, we will go with, there with you. But we still believe you can do this. Your baby is safe. You're safe. It's up to you. Um, so we stayed. And uh, another time she sent me up to my room to be alone for a bit to ask myself why I wasn't having my baby, <laughs> which is wow. honestly the turning point. After that, I found my center and got, got it done. And then she was born not long after that. So man, the mind body connection is such a big piece oh, yeah, of how definitely. birth proceeds. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, you went she upstairs was... and thought about why aren't you <laughs> having your baby? And you went well, that's the assignment and... she gave me, but honestly, I don't remember thinking about it much when I was up there, but I think when I was finally alone, I yeah. like alone, alone, not even my husband, I had no choice but to go in side myself and find like, well, the birthing from within that you were just talking about in another podcast episode. I can't, nobody right. else can do this for me. I have to find mm -hmm. it inside of myself. I have to do this work. Um, mm -hmm. I have to find my own rhythm and trust my own process. Um, and so just having time alone in a dark room to find my own way, I think was what tipped it into, you know, working. <laughs> so, yeah. So ever since then, with each that, of my so. subsequent babies, I've labored alone intentionally for the first two to three hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that did have like a big impact on you, mm -hmm. knowing you alone, actually not being watched, not being mm -hmm. pressured. Because it's it's crazy because even though nobody is pressuring us on the outside, we put that pressure on ourselves sometimes, like because, mm -hmm. you know, we know everybody's around us or we want to appease people somehow. And then it's like, wait, but why is yes. that happening, happening like I imagined it or how they expect it to or whatever the case is and when we're 100%. alone you know that's it we're alone and let's just feel your body actually you're more aware of yourself and mm -hmm. um what you're feeling oh that's that's beautiful mm -hmm. okay so with your next so that was baby two but first baby basically yes first and then like yeah and then and the next you had one... four more yeah. <laughs> so apparently I wasn't deterred after that really hard, long labor. But I remember with the next one, praying and asking the Lord, if you could just half my labor time, that would be amazing. Like 24 hours instead of 48. I would love that so much. <laughs> yeah. And then my midwife had a dream that the baby was born in five hours and I laughed at her. And she's like, well, just, just don't put off calling me when it, when you go into labor. And I was like, whatever, it's not going to be that short. So um, I remember waking up and I think it was like three in the morning with contractions one day on his due date, actually. And I just, yeah, I tried to just lay there and stay restful. I did not wake up my husband for a couple hours. He was actually sleeping in the guest room because I usually kick him out of our bed towards the end of my pregnancies because I want space, <laughs> like just yeah. spread out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go get him right away. And then I went to get him when I was pretty sure it was real. And he was like, should I call the midwife? And I'm like, no, because last time when they got here, everything slowed down and I don't want anything to slow down. So he's like, okay. And then he ended up calling her and she stayed in like her car in the driveway for a little bit. And then 
anyway, long story short, she came in at 7 a.m. So this was after four hours of labor and my son was born at eight. So it was, it was exactly five hours. (gasps) What? Yeah. And, uh, and, and it so was you so pray, easy. pray for 12 hours and you're doing it. I prayed for 24. Five hours. <laughs> I prayed for 24 oh, prayed for and got 24. five. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, so I couldn't even believe, like, I remember being on my bathroom floor, like leaning over the toilet and just saying to my midwife, I don't even know what to do with myself anymore. Like, what do I do? <laughs> like, can, should I get in the bath? And she was like, mm, you can. And then she's like, do you want to have your baby on the bathroom floor? And I was like, no, but we're not there yet. She's like, oh, but we are. (laughs) And I was like, but I can't move. She's like, I will help you. So we got me into my bedroom on the bed and I pretty much immediately started pushing on the hands and knees and he was born like 20 minutes later. (laughs) So I just couldn't even believe it. It was like, how did that just happen? Like my first birth was so long and so hard. How could this possibly happened that quickly and that easily <laughs> it was amazing only god yeah indeed. yeah that's amazing mm-hmm. so like were the the next ones just as like simple easy going straightforward yeah births? yeah the next two were pretty similar like they were each born within a couple of days of their due dates like um, I labored alone in both cases for the first couple hours, and then they were both like my my living child number three um, was born in three and a half hours, and my fourth was it's kind of hard to say because there was some labor that I didn't think was real, and then when it really hit, it was like so 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 fast. So I'm never mm-hmm. quite sure how to say how many hours I was with her, how to count it. Oh, okay. um, And both of those ones were essentially pain-free too. I would not describe them as painful. They were intense. Um, They each had like a painful moment, like one painful moment, but otherwise it was just, yeah, very simple and sweet and straightforward. Wow. Goodness. Yeah. You are blessed. That's amazing. Absolutely. so, (laughs) So that was before, at what point did you become like, it become um more immersed into like the birth world because at oh, this yes. point you're just like mom giving birth but like then well, you started I no I need to back up <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it because so like I said I I was already a photographer and then after yeah. realizing birth photography was a thing I knew I wanted to try it so I photographed my first birth about 6 months after my firstborn So I started photographing births when she was like not even a year old and kind of ended up amping that up over time. And so I was a birth photographer during all my subsequent births. And I had been therefore attending births, both in hospitals and at homes with OBs, with midwives, like all kinds of births. So, and had developed a little bit of an obsession with reading midwifery memoirs. (laughs) Yeah, this is a real genre of literature, and it's my favorite. <laughs> um, I love so, it. I was very much a birth nerd at this point, and a birth photographer. And in fact, when I was pregnant with my fourth living child, um, I perceived what I thought to be a call to pursuing midwifery while I was pregnant with her. Um, and her name, even the name I had already picked before, kind of coming to terms with that calling is Maeve which is in Shakespearean literature um a fictional like a fairy um the midwife of fairies wow um, who flies up people's noses and makes them have dreams wow so when I found out that meaning I was like oh my word I already wanted this name I didn't know there was this layer of meaning and here I am sitting here like dreaming about becoming a midwife um So I even arranged an apprenticeship while I was pregnant with her with my midwife. Um, And we agreed that I would start when she was like four months old. Um, But also interestingly, during her pregnancy, every time I pictured her birth, I was alone in the dark in my bathroom, completely alone. So I was essentially envisioning an unassisted birth, but still didn't really know much about unassisted births. 
Um, okay. I was introduced wow. to that idea during her pregnancy is when I first started learning about unassisted birth through Indie uh-huh. Birth Network. Um, and I found myself, I was like, oh, that's pretty neat. But I was not at the point where I would have intentionally chosen it or felt confident choosing it. But I was also envisioning being alone when she was born, which I just didn't know how to reconcile because I had hired this birth team, which was my midwife I'd had three times before my friend who was apprenticing with her and a photographer that I loved. Like I had like this team of, and oh, and another friend coming to be with my kids. Like I had this whole team of like five women that I loved and like wanted there, but I also kept seeing myself being alone. The way it ended up working out was that her labor came upon me so quickly and during a blizzard that by the time I realized her birth was imminent and contacted my people, they couldn't make it in time except for the head midwife, my midwife. She made it, I think less than 10 minutes before my daughter came out and then everyone else trickled in after she was born and just kind of spent the postpartum time hanging out with me. Oh, beautiful. That's so beautiful. So it was like a blend, right? It was like, I got Mm -hmm. to be alone, but also have these people that I cared for be present as well. So, so, okay. How did you hear about unassisted birth then? You said through Um, Indie Birth Network. I, I, I've heard of them. Um, yeah, I, think I had subscribed to their emails for a while. Yeah, I think it was through them. Like that's, you know, how when you're always looking at birthy things, it's hard to pinpoint yeah. exactly where a specific concept originated from in your brain. But I, yeah. I feel like I associate it with them. Um, Indie Birth Network is actually not primarily about unassisted birth, but they are about women birthing oh. um, in yeah. autonomy and with, and they're about traditional midwifery, which is much more hands off, less clinical. Um, Mm -hmm. and so they had brought up the subject, I think, and because they're not opposed to it, they support it, but they also train midwives in a traditional model. Um, Mm. so there's a lot of things about their birth philosophy and their midwifery philosophy that really resonate with me deeply. Um, so, and there's actually, they have another part in my story, but all right. Well, first for the, for the, um, listeners who don't know about unassisted birth, this might be new to people. Mm. Um, how would you, how would you define that? I guess. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, because I find that even within birthy land, people seem to have different definitions of it to some extent, but I think the most basic definition is giving birth without any trained medical providers present. Like that's the most basic. (laughs) Hey, it's me. Just taking a quick sec to let you know about the pink premium access. Get the link for access in the show notes or heavenlytreasure.net where you can choose monthly or yearly access options. You will get all the uncut gems hidden from the SALT podcast, plus exclusive episodes, promos from guests, Ask Me Anything episodes, and private group Zoom calls for Access members only. Sorry to hide these next gems from you. See you in the pink premium, and thanks for helping me keep the show alive and running. Be friendly to both, because I find there's unassisted birth groups of like, you may never mention getting assistance from anyone. And then there's other home birth groups where it's all about midwives, and you're a little crazy if you're doing unassisted. So I wanted a space that was open to supporting both because I support both. Um, And even though I didn't intentionally choose it with that baby number four, I did intentionally choose it with my fifth. So, yeah, there's a lot of conversation. (laughs) (laughs) Well, first I should say I thought we were done having babies. Um, We thought we were done. Um, After that fourth baby was born, I did start my midwifery apprenticeship. I did it for nine months, attended 43 births. Um, It was an amazing learning experience. So intense. Um, Yeah. And it had to, had to end like it, the Holy spirit made it really clear that it was not the right path or the right fit. So I did quit. Um, And that's a whole nother story that I don't think I'll get into right now. And then I applied to the indie birth midwifery school um, thinking maybe that would be a better fit. And then right as I was about to register, the Holy Spirit checked me again and was like, no, you can't do this either. Uh, so yeah. I thought, okay, you are, I thought you were calling me to this, but you are closing a lot of doors. Um, 
so just kind of stopped pursuing midwifery and started my sister birth business, which was a combination of photography, doula like support, holistic health coaching, um, and like Christian discipleship based support too. basically taking all the different pieces of my history and blending it into one supportive package for pregnant women. Um, and loved that, did that for quite a while Beautiful. thinking we were done with babies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, um, after, so three, no, two and a half, almost three years later, my I suddenly stopped getting clients. It was like my business just petered out, even though I hadn't changed anything. And I remember asking the Lord, are you making room for something new? Because in my experience of you, when you close doors, you're usually making room for something else. And so I just want to say yes to whatever it is you're making room for. I did not think that that something was a baby. (laughs) In fact, (laughs) I was actively in counseling, working through saying goodbye to my childbearing years because that was sad. And I was like having trouble closing that door a little bit, but also excited for a new phase. And so it was like writing, like she was giving me homework assignments to write, like laments saying goodbye to my childbearing years, et cetera, et cetera. So then much oh. to my surprise, we became pregnant and, um, <laughs> there was a lot of shock and a little embarrassment <laughs> because I was, 39. I mean, she would be born when I was 40. We were having a really bad financial time and a lot of people in our life knew it. So I was afraid they would judge us for having a baby when we were like struggling financially, all this Um, crap to, to wade through. I had also, um, my relationship with my midwife had taken, it had gone sour and it was no longer there. So I didn't have like this midwife relationship anymore. And, um, but then once I get past the shock and found the courage to tell my husband because I was afraid he'd be upset. He wasn't. The Lord had prepared his heart. Um, my next thought was, oh, this means I can have an unassisted birth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I had been Bland. holding in my heart for all these years and feeling a little sad that I wasn't going to be able to do it because it seemed so great the more I learned about it. Yeah. So um, so we set off very early with baby number five to, to go unassisted this time, or I like the word free birth better. Um, yeah. So, uh, we chose a wild pregnancy and a free birth, meaning I did my own prenatal care almost entirely, but I do have a lot of friends who are midwives. So I had a couple of them help me find heartbeat early on. And then, cause they had Dopplers and I didn't. Yeah. And we did a few a la carte appointments with a different midwife in our area, mostly for my husband's sake, because he had some things he wanted to talk through, like regarding emergency preparedness. That was really a big deal for him. Uh So even though I could tell him what I knew about it, he needed somebody outside of me who was perhaps more authoritative, I think, to kind of like set his mind at ease. Yeah. I think men always need a second and third opinion. Some it's all right. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And she's like a brilliant educator and really trusts birth and um, was very supportive of our free birth plans. So that worked well. We saw her like two or three times. Um, And then, wow, yeah. And her, her birth was also very fast, but had several days of incredible debilitating pain leading up to it. Um, That, yeah, I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand up straight without crying. So I was just kind of in bed for the last almost week before she finally was born. She was born at 42 and two, which is the longest I'd ever carried a baby. Uh, I didn't expect that because my others had been so close to their due date. This was during COVID. Um, So that was another element. Yeah, this was 2020. She's turning one in two days. Oh, um, happy yeah. birthday, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Blessing. She's such a wonderful surprise. So this was last year around this yeah. time. You're yep. preparing to give birth mm-hmm. to this beautiful, unassisted, oh wait, free birth baby. <laughs> <gasps> yes. Yep. Pretty cool. That's amazing. And she was born f- fast as well, like five hours. Mm, how did I end up calculating it? Three, three hours. Um, wow. So That's a we had arranged a photographer to come because I just can't help it. I love birth photography. 
And yeah. a friend of mine who's a birth keeper and has her babies unassisted too. I just asked if she would come be present with me. But spoiler alert, they didn't make it, um, <laughs> which was fine. <laughs> Completely fine with me, actually. Um, the friend who un- births unassisted was supporting me over text messaging a little bit. In fact, I had been, so I'd been laying in bed watching stand up comedy because that was my coping mechanism, having yeah. contractions on and off. Um, and kind of timing them, but mostly trying not to think about it. Just laying there for two hours, contracting, watching comedy. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, okay, I should get up because if this is real, it will keep going. Like if yeah. I stand up and start moving around and the contractions keep happening, then I'll know that this is really it. So I yeah. got up, started walking around and they stopped. So I had told my friends, I think this might be it. And then I texted them back to say, never mind, it all stopped. So, you know, you can go off guard. Meanwhile, yeah. my husband stopped in and looked at me and he kind of had a feeling that actually something was going to happen. So he texted them again and said, actually, we would be on point because we might need you. So then he oh took the kids goodness. out for a walk <laughs> after filling up the birth pool. He took the kids out on a walk and I was in here so frustrated because he just filled the birth pool and I were wasting all this water because I wasn't really in labor. <laughs> and my <laughs> My friend over text said, well, why don't you just get in it and enjoy it? Use the water because it's there anyway. It's going to feel really good because you've been so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's going to feel amazing. Just get in there. So mm-hmm. She sent me a worship song to listen to. I got in the tub, turned on the music and almost instantaneously started having intense bearing down contractions. So my, my husband happened to come back right at about that moment. And he saw me and he's like, oh yeah, we're having a baby right now. So he told everyone to come. Um, he helped me get up to the toilet and back in the pool and change my bra. And then my kids came in the room <clears throat> right as her head was crowning. So she was born 30 minutes after I got in the pool. And just so happened my kids and their babysitter came in the room right as her head was coming out, which is perfect timing for me. Cause then I wasn't distracted by them because I was too far in at that point to be distracted. Yeah. And, um, they so said they hilarious to things. Yes. Aww. And my so five-year-old special. was like, mom, when you're done having this baby, I'm going to give you this quarter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, and my nine-year-old was photographing it with her little like kitty camera. And Aww. my, their babysitter, who's a good family friend of ours was videoing it all. I didn't know that. Um, oh, wow. So she was born in the water, which is my first water birth. And I got to really slowly, gently bring her up from the water um, it was felt so amazing to catch her myself and to just have that slowed down moment where nobody was like pushing her, throwing her on my chest, but I could just gently lift her up and like make eye contact with her and welcome her and the kids are all around and it was so perfect. Oh, um, so perfect. And then that sounds yeah, so special. It was very special, but I pretty quickly realized that she wasn't quite okay. She oh. was quite pale, you know, blue or blue or purple babies are fine. Pale is not yeah. so good. She also like, she had a tiny bit of muscle tone when she first came out. Like she startled when I brought her up out of the water, but then she went completely floppy. Um, so I stimulated her, like rubbed her back, talked to her, told her that I was, that she was here. I flicked the bottoms of her feet. I suctioned her nose and her mouth with mine. And then I even ended up giving her some breaths um, with my mouth um, to help her breathe. But it took her two and a half minutes to take a breath. Um, And in some ways, not a big deal because babies sometimes need a minute. But I had been in a round birth enough and studied midwifery enough to know that her APGAR score was real low. And um, she needed some help. Oh, Um, that's scary. So, in fact... After a while, I asked my husband, how many minutes has it been? And he told me, and I asked him to call EMS. And they arrived, but hadn't come in the house yet when she started crying. So oh. I said, tell them to go away. They cannot come in here. I don't need them. They cannot come in here. <laughs> so he had to like fight them off. Because once you activate them, it's really hard to get them to go away. Yeah. Um, but they did leave. Because um, I just didn't want that emergency personnel in my birth space if I didn't need them yeah. um and so then we kind of you know sighed our sigh of relief um that big that sigh of relief 
Oh my yeah. gosh. That is scary. And she was crying and she got color back. Yeah. Yeah. And she latched on eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, goodness. Pretty quick. Yeah, she did. She came around good. Um, it was crazy to have that experience. I didn't expect to have to do that. And I was shocked at how just calm and matter of fact I was. And mm-hmm. I have video footage of it, which is hard for me to watch, but also um I feel proud of myself like I helped my baby breathe (laughs) and you should feel proud of yourself mama you kept cool you helped your baby you acted you Mm -hmm. you you called emergency and you did what you could to do all of that after giving birth holy moly (laughs) father almighty the strength and the power that he gives us in the moments that we need it the most yes Sister, and you know when holy. there's when there's no one else in the room who can do it you're gonna find yes. a way to do it you know what I mean yeah. like mm-hmm. if you have a midwife or a trained professional in the room mentally it's our human nature to offload the responsibility to the person in the room who has the most skill or who knows the most mm-hmm. when there and isn't that anyone person. <laughs> I was that person there is no yeah. choice you have to find your you have to do it you just have to do it so and I think Girl. so much of it is instinctual I had also been trained in neonatal resuscitation. So I think what I did was a combination of that training and my instinct because it was not textbook to the training by any means, but I know I borrowed some things from that as well. And she's fine now. Your your baby, she's like, none of that affected her having no oxygen for however long she was fine. Yeah. I mean, her cord was still attached and pulsing weekly, weekly, like more weekly than I would have expected. But so she was still getting oxygen supply and they say, you know, five minutes is about the longest a baby can go without breathing on their own before you start to have brain damage. So we didn't get to that mark. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Girl, you have been through a lot with six pregnancies. (laughs) Oh my word. I forgot to tell you about another, I had a miscarriage in between my second and third as well, that I forgot to mention that was a hemorrhage and I almost bled out and I had to have a transfusion. So there has been a lot. Um, That's a lot. And you can use all of that now that mm -hmm. you have your, your, you have a course, right? And I know that you do so Mm -hmm. many videos and you're constantly educating and helping women you are such a source of wisdom my goodness because mm-hmm. like you have been through pretty much everything minus a hospital birth and cesarean yeah no hospital births but otherwise it's been a lot of variety yeah um I feel really grateful for all of it and like I I'm so passionate in this belief that like birth wasn't given to us as women to be a curse like the process of giving birth is a gift from the father and an invitation into being transformed and walking in a greater degree of faith. Like, and I, and I hate that in the church, we've turned it into a medical event that you have to be rescued from instead of letting it be an agent of grace and transformation for women of faith, because that's what it is. And so having babies is God's gift to us. Like it's not something to be afraid of. It's not something to, have done to us it's not something to seek escape from it's um each one will bring out more things that we need to deal with will give us more things that we need to be the mother to the specific children he's given us and will give us more opportunities to walk in faith and I'm so passionate about that (laughs) I hear it I hear you I'm like I'm not even interrupting this woman right now let you I want you to hear this rant so bad because I want women to hear it too it is such a huge passion of mine what you're doing I wish that I could do too like just create courses and um yeah, have women learn this like you can do it and it doesn't have to be you know this medical thing like how you said that you're just mm-hmm. so scared that um you're instilled with all this fear, you're, you're ra- you you grow up with this idea of what birth is. And then everyone around you is saying the same thing. And so you think mm-hmm. that's what you need to do. And you don't question mm-hmm. it. And, and even women, some women really want to have home births, but their husbands are so, you know, stuck on that too, that they are like, yeah. no, 
no, we're going to do it in the mm-hmm. hospital. This is the only way. And then the women have traumatic births because that's not what they wanted. And that's mentally, they weren't there to, to cope yeah. with that. It's such a hard thing, you know, um, like what, mm. oh my gosh, I have so many things. Like how you said, we can take this conversation on so many. I think we have to have like part two and three and four. <laughs> we might. So we could just have all these home birth rants um okay let's let's talk a little bit more about about yeah about how how in in the church this people are women especially are kind of swayed from like taking this route and how Mm -hmm. we can come to terms with even if it's going against what our church is telling us we can still do this Mm. Where to yeah. go? <laughs> Where to you go know. with that thought? Well, luckily, I don't find the church is like usually preaching from the pulpits about "thou shalt have their baby at a hospital." <laughs> it's yeah. more of like a, a subliminal Social. message, <laughs> yeah, or just like a norm, you know, like that. In general, the church tends to trust modern medicine, I think, mm. um, and yeah, so. I mean, I just, there are women, like if you're listening to this and you're a woman who for, like believes in Jesus and is in the church, but also just has a feeling that there's more to this birth thing like that you could have <laughs> and that mm-hmm. you do feel that little pull to a home birth. You, are, you really aren't alone. There really are more people like you. <laughs> like mm-hmm. Two of them are right here on this podcast. <laughs> and then my, my Facebook group is full of 1800 more. So yes. um find the people they are out there and you will feel bolstered by by that community of seeing how those two things can be mingled in a really beautiful way that is still true to Christ um and I will say too I have a five-day workshop that usually has a charge but I would like to make a coupon code for whoever's listening to this to be able to hear it for free but it's called thank you yeah it's called Trust God, Trust Birth, The Path to Joyful, Confident Birth at Home. And I just did it for the first time a little bit ago. And the reviews on it were so amazing. Just women in tears saying, thank you for validating this for me. Thank you for helping me see what's possible and getting God's perspective on birth. And so if anyone would like to go through that, I would love for you to be able to, to do that just an hour awesome. a day for five days. So I'm sure I can get you links for it, but that's another good way because it's so important to fill your mind with a, di- with a different perspective and grow more confident in, in your perspective, especially if you are in a church situation where maybe that's abnormal. Abnormal doesn't mean wrong in this case. Mm-hmm. So we have to just fill our minds with truth about it um, mm-hmm. so that we're not, I don't know. Then if somebody does say something weird to you, Like, oh, you're so brave. I could never do that. Or, well, what about the baby? (laughs) Like the more rooted you are and confident in why you're doing what you're doing, not just for like personal reasons, but also like as a believer, like as a faith reason, then the Mm -hmm. more you can kind of let people's comments just roll off your back, like water off a duck, you know? And then Mm -hmm. who knows, you may be changing the culture of your faith community over time by just Mm -hmm. quietly and self-assuredly holding your line and pursuing birth in this way. People will see that and other women around you might be greatly influenced by that. Oh, for sure. That's such a, that it's, it's sometimes people don't want to be in that spotlight, but sometimes the most high puts us in certain places to initiate that change and to, Mm -hmm. you know, bring light to something. So that is, that's a blessing. Thank you for providing that code. It's going to be in the show notes. So that is so amazing. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, Um, I guess I should ask what other resources you offer or that you would recommend Mm -hmm. (laughs) that you would recommend others to offer uh, that (laughs) others offer. Yeah. Well, yeah. Join the Facebook group. If that resonates with you, natural Christian home birth, and then, um, I do have like a large group coaching program that's all about home birth from a faith perspective and, and includes um, courses and community and group coaching calls. Um, I also really 
think you might like to check out, this is not by me, but this book called Holy Labor. Um, okay. It's a lovely book by, I'm going to forget her name right now. She's a <laughs> doula, but wrote a lovely book about just, um, yeah, faith and birth. That's not home birth awesome. specific, but it is birth and faith. Um, what else would be good? I don't know. That's all I'm coming up with off the top of my head right now. <laughs> if you think of any others and you want to email them to me, then I'll just add them in the show notes after and everyone could just check okay. all Great the idea. resources. Yeah. Brooke recommends. Um, you all know which ones I recommend. They're in the other home birth and birthing from within um, notes. So you can mm, check good. those out. And my birth stories are also up on the blog. Um, but Fun. yeah, <laughs> but I guess any last, before we close out, any last thoughts or message to women? I know you've said so much already, but um, to the listeners, any last thoughts that you might have for them? I always come back to two words, <laughs> um, trust and surrender. Uh, trust meaning less fretting, <laughs> less anxious worrying about measurements and tests and ultrasounds and safety and more trust in the body that God gave you and the mm. design he's made for birth and how perfect it is how mm -hmm. intricate and like down to the detail you can trust him and you can trust his design and then surrender <laughs> meaning that like birth is inherently unpredictable and you never know quite where it's going to take you it will force you to let go of the illusion of control um which is something we have to do through our entire parenting journey as well so learning and practicing the art of surrender during mm. pregnancy and birth also is good practice for being a mom. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Trust and surrender. <laughs> Love those. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brooke. One last Thank thing. You. What yeah. is your Instagram or where are oh. you at? Facebook, Instagram, where can people find you? Yep. On Instagram, I am sister birth mm -hmm. on Facebook. Um, my Facebook page is sister births. Um, oh, it's like facebook.com backslash pages backslash sister birth. And then okay, um, my website is sisterbirth.com. All right. And so I will pretty, have, pretty um, easy. <laughs> yeah. Sister birth. Just remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have it in the show notes as well. So everyone could just click over and find you join the group and and definitely I am going to take advantage of your, I'm not even pregnant. I'm not even expecting, but I just love <laughs> all birth talks. So it's, you will find me in your course. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I will definitely be there. Thank you so much, it. Brooke. God bless yeah, thank you, you so and much, bless Jenny. your babies. Mm, thank you. Bless you as well. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening in. Be sure to hit subscribe and visit heavenlytreasure.net for more. See you on IG at Heavenly Treasure Living. Till next time, blessings and remember to be the salt of the earth.